Thank you for joining us today for this conversation on adaptive recreation. I'm Scott Wiebe, MDA's Director of Recreation and Community Programs, and I'm looking forward to our conversation today. I'd like to thank our Facebook Live supporter, Cool Ways Sports, for their generous support of today's program. I'm honored to be joined today by three recreation experts. Dr. Jeff Jeffrey Rosenbluth is the Assistant Chief Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation at the University of Utah Health and the founder of the TRAILS program. Lori Brown is the Director of Research at the American Camp Association, and Amy Shinneman is an MDA Ambassador Advocate and a Recreation Enthusiast. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. According to the Outdoor Foundation, more than half of the United States population participates in at least one outdoor activity. However, that leaves 50% of the population who does not participate in outdoor activities. Outdoor activities have been proven to decrease stress, increase self-esteem, and provide overall physical and health benefits to individuals. At MDA, we understand the importance of recreation and connecting the neuromuscular community to adaptive opportunities for incorporating recreation into everyday life. So let's get started with the conversation. Dr. Rosenbluth, we'll start with you. Can you explain what adaptive recreation is and why it's important? Sure. Uh, adaptive recreation really is uh, using modifications of uh, existing uh, recreation devices or maybe even a novel or new uh, device to be able to participate in you know, any recreational activity that you might want to participate in. Uh, I think it is, I, I'm sure all of our speakers have a lot of uh, opinions, but you know, for me in rehabilitation, you know, I, I see a lot of folks who really identify uh, uh, with the sport that they participate in. Like I'm a skier, I'm a biker, I'm a, I'm a dancer. And I think uh, when you're able to really uh, provide whatever uh, adaptation, modification that you need to let people do that you know, throughout their life, uh, you, I, I, I really have seen a, a huge improvement really in quality of life for the folks that we take care of here. And I uh, just think it's, it's, it's uh, super important, just like it is for everyone. Absolutely. It sounds incredibly important. Uh, you developed a program called Trails that focuses on adaptive recreation. Can you share about how that program came to be developed and share about the programs that are offered there? Yeah, absolutely. So um, there are lots of just excellent adaptive recreation programs throughout the country. At the University of Utah, we chose to focus a little bit more <clears throat> strongly on some areas we thought were in need of development. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we really thought a lot about complex physical disability and how um, there were not the devices that were already on the market and available that allowed someone with that type of disability to you know, operate a piece of adaptive equipment, particularly with recreation independently and with a high level of performance. And so we've spent a lot of time with our clinicians, our, our patients, our engineers to really look at modifying equipment that's already on the market or to create really new equipment that enables you to participate <clears throat> at a much, excuse me, sorry, <clears throat> at a much higher level uh, than people have ever seen before. For instance, we use a, um, a, a powered assist alpine ski and also a powered uh, kayak and sailboat that en enable all of the same really uh, independent levels of control that you might expect uh, for anyone with any type of disability or without a disability. Um, and we're bringing those out, not just in Utah, but have been able to distribute those really throughout the country on the East Coast and the Rockies and the West Coast, and are working really hard on additional grants to try to get more of this equipment out and really kind of level the playing field, I, I think a little bit more uh, so that people can participate and really try to include family members and have everyone uh, be able to play, I think at the, really at the same level. That sounds fantastic, thank you. Um, Lori, I have a two-part question for you. Uh, to start, can you share about the American Camp Association and its mission, and then talk about the research that the ACA has done around the benefits of participation, participating in recreation and camp programs? Sure. So the American Camp Association is the oldest and largest um, membership uh, organization for summer camp professionals in the United States. Uh, our mission is to improve uh, the lives of individuals and communities through high quality camp experiences. 
one of the primary things we do is offer an educational program around uh, health, safety, and risk management. Um, that's our accreditation program. We accredit over 3,000 day and overnight camps um, across the United States. We also provide extensive uh, professional development opportunities for summer camp and out of school time youth professionals. And we have a very large research agenda. We've been doing research for over two decades, um, largely to identify the benefits and the outcomes of attending camp. Uh, we've known for a long time that those outcomes include uh, what we'd consider social emotional learning outcomes, things like relationship skills, um, self-confidence, interest in exploration. Um, we also recognize the great value in terms of personal identi identity and uh, young people really express that they uh, find their, their life passion at camp and recreational activities. Um, and in these days, we're very interested in the mental health outcomes of camp. Uh, there's one outcome that we're identifying in our new study, uh, which is a longitudinal study of, of camp experiences that has identified something that we're calling being present. And uh, young people or, or people that attended camp as a child reflect that at camp they learned how to uh, kind of be away from some of the stress and pressures of real life, how to be present in the outdoors and present with their peers. And they really felt free to explore and free from any kind of anxiety they might experience at home. So we like to say that summer camp experiences have a wide array of outcomes. And we know through our, our current longitudinal outcomes study that these, these benefits do last far beyond camp. Um, and, and adults say that they do help them thrive in, in school, in jobs and into uh, their adult lives in general. That's fantastic, thank you. Um, yeah. The American Camp Association is such a great partner, um, has so many great resources for organizations uh, that, that provide camping programs and uh, the research that you're doing, you know, underscores a lot of the mental, uh, emotional and physical health uh, benefits. So thank you for sharing. Dr. Rosenbluth, can you, uh, you have an interesting view as a, both a clinician and also a professional in the adaptive recreation world. What are some of the common adaptive recreation opportunities for individuals living with neuromuscular disease? Well, I really do think the sky is the limit. I, I think I, I have seen or participated in adaptations for just about every sport. I mean, from you know paragliding and parachuting to to cycling and and water based sports. Um, if there isn't an adaptation there, I know that there are people that are working on them. So I would uh, definitely encourage people uh, to really seek out you know the sport that they're interested in uh, uh, for sure. I think that um, the uh, I think that the uh, recreational activities are, um, yeah, really just, uh, yeah, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. <laughs> uh, no worries. I, I, think, I think that particularly uh, we've, been, we've been focusing a little bit on sports that you can do year round. And so we've actually even taken um, things like cross country skiing and we've been able to apply that from uh, the winter and the snow to really um, wheel devices that you can do in the summer. We've taken cycling uh, that you can obviously do outdoors, but then we've also been able to put those cycles on trainers in the off season so that you can actually do those in a virtual environment. And so I really think whether you feel like you can get out and go uh, at a distance to an adaptive recreation center or participate in home, I think especially with, uh, with uh, the COVID year that we've had here, there's been such an uptick in opportunities that are available both in the field and in the home to be a part of uh, a virtual that that's great you've said the sky's the limit and it really sounds like there's a, quite a quite a variety of opportunities um if someone's new to trying recreational activities how would you recommend that they get started with that yeah i think um i, I really I was, I was thinking about that a, a little bit more and, and, and many of the rec programs that are fantastic it's still hard to really uh spend a lot of time advertising and so i think it still requires a lot of you know really investigation and most of these programs are available with simple searches. Most cities, counties, states have, have um, designated recreation programs that have adaptations that are available. And, and there are some more dedicated adaptive programs in almost every state uh, that really can accommodate uh, really just any level, I think, of, of disability. And there's more and more products really that are coming out all the time. Uh, so I think people should really stay tuned in and, and, and keep looking out there. I also think participating in um, social media, and there's so many of the adaptive programs are now getting on there. I'm surprised every day about what people are doing throughout the country and the world. So 
uh, just adaptive recreation, Instagram, Facebook, uh, whatever your preference. So many choices and, and ways to ways to find them. Um, and Lori, what would you add for for suggestions on recommendations for getting started with recreational activities? Well, I'm, I'm obviously a big advocate of summer camps. Uh, summer camps are an excellent way to explore new activities. Most summer camps offer a wide array of recreational activities, ranging from the arts and creative expression to sports, to outdoor activities, to high adventure activities. Uh, there are camps of, of every type, every length, every location. Um, we know from our research that the social emotional environment of camp is, is really supportive of um, kind of appropriate risk taking, trying new things. Young people will also say that, you know, I tried this new thing because I had a camp counselor that I could relate to and I saw that person doing it. So therefore I felt safe doing it. Or young people will say, I tried archery for the first time at camp. I would never be able to try that at home. And I tried it and I, and I really liked it. And then I was able to find an archery program at home to continue that activity. Um, I, will, I will say the American Camp Association has a tool uh, for parents and families to use called, the, called Find a Camp. You can search by um, location, you can search by session length, you can search by specialty, um, you can search by you know, camps that serve young people with specific uh, disability or chronic illness and, and find camps that, that might be in your region or that might be of interest to you. So I, I think camp is a great place to start. Absolutely. And like you both shared, just get out there and find something that you have have a passion for and something that you're interested in as, as a good starting point. Um, and speaking of speaking of that, uh, Amy, I know you found a lot of passion through indoor and outdoor exercising. Uh, can you share a little bit about about you and your family and then talk about what has worked for you when it comes to recreational activities and, and kind of how you found that passion? Yeah, sure. Um, so I live with a form of muscular dystrophy called Beslan myopathy. And, and so all the muscles in my body, um, all body are weak. Um, and early on, you know, my parents were told, um, you know, they didn't know, doctors didn't know if I would ever walk or how long I would be walking. And um, so my parents, you know, that was a, a big goal is, is to keep me walking and they learned early on that swimming would be a really good activity for me. Um, you know, in the water, you're more free and, and more freely able to move about and um, you don't feel your disability as much in the water. And, and I think that's why I first started to become passionate about swimming um, is just how free it made me feel. And so through the years, I got more involved in joined a swim team and um, while I didn't swim competitively, I was on the team and, and exercising and part of that. Um, and so that's kind of just stayed, swimming has been one of the main things that I like to do for recreation. Um, so we kind of, my husband and I um, decided to install a little home gym with a little therapy pool here at home so that I could continue that year round. Um, and in this pool, there's an underwater treadmill, um, which I didn't even know existed until we were going to get this pool. And, and then we learned that that was a thing. Um, so I've really gotten involved with using that several times a week. Um, and on that treadmill, I'm able to run, um, you know, in the water. I can't run. I've never been able to run otherwise, but um, it was kind of neat when we got the pool that my um, then 12 year old son actually taught me how to run. Um, so that was a really great thing. Um, and so I think I'm so passionate about um, exercise because I want to keep walking. And I've been able to do that up until this point. Um, and that's just my goal is to keep walking, keep active, keep moving in, in different ways. I also love to go hiking. Um, I like to challenge myself on small hikes or there's this one big hill that I like to, to do with my walking sticks and I have special braces that I wear um, on those hikes too. Um, and then I also have a three wheel bike that I ride. Um, I'm no longer able to ride a two wheel bike, but I've moved on to that. So um, another adaptive program I did was a skiing program in Colorado. Um, and so that we, my family and I were out vacationing and we found out about this um, adaptive ski program. So I did that for a day 
Um, and that was just a lot of a lot of fun, and also another very freeing experience. Just um, skiing down the mountain and feeling the wind in my hair, and um, I didn't know that was possible. So I'm, I was really grateful for that experience. Um, and I hope to have more experiences um, with adaptive sports. I'd love to do adaptive paddle boarding and adaptive water skiing um, in the future. So. That's fantastic. Thanks for sharing, Amy. Um, and you, between your your son teaching you how to run, which is which is pretty neat. Um, and I know that uh, you also have your, your husband involved as well as uh, he and you have done uh, MDA's Team Momentum, uh, which is a running, walking, cycling and athletic program. Can you share why uh, you chose to get involved and, and what that experience has been like for you? Yeah, sure. So my husband's a marathon runner and um, he was scheduled to run the Boston Marathon in 2019. Um, he had qualified on his own for that. Um, and it was through, um, I think, Facebook. I just stumbled upon um, Team Momentum and, and started looking into that. And I thought, you know, I talked to my husband. I said, hey, maybe you could join up with this team and, and we could raise some funds for MDA. and. And so we contacted um, Team Momentum's national director, Chris Marshall, and um, my husband was able to join the team for that 2019 Boston Marathon. Um, and while we were there, we went to the expo there um, before the marathon. And my husband had kind of seen these racing bikes. Um, we call it a duo bike. It's got a few different names, but it's, um, it's designed, you know, for for somebody like me that isn't able to run to be able to experience, um, you know, a marathon or a 5K or, or whatever. But um, so we were able to see one of those at the expo and, and get in it and try it out and learn about it. Um, and so we, we started talking to Chris about our, our idea of doing that. And he actually found a bike that we were able to use that had been used by another um, gentleman and his wife that had also, I believe they ran the Chicago Marathon in, a, in a other years past. Um, and a couple other uh, MDA families had used the bike, but it was available and Chris offered it to us and suggested that maybe we could run the 2019 Chicago Marathon. Um, and so my husband had to give that a little bit of thought as he had just, you know, already run one marathon, but um, he decided he wanted to take that challenge on. And so we pretty much immediately started training together. Um, he would run during the week on his own and then Saturdays were our long runs together. Um, and through that, you know, we really became a team and I really felt like I was part of the whole experience. and. And in that bike, I can almost feel like I'm running. Um, I get to feel the speed and, you know, again, just the wind in my hair and just feel free um, and just be a huge encourager to him. And so Team Momentum joined that for the, we actually completed the 2019 Chicago Marathon and um, it was just a great experience with them. And, and we've really enjoyed that. And, and we have, um, you know, our sights set on another big marathon coming up we're hoping to get into. Um, so fingers crossed on that one. Fingers crossed for sure. Thank you for, for thank you for sharing. You, to stay with you for, for another minute, um, you shared a, a few different um, recreational and, and outdoor uh, type of activities that you like to do. Um, are, were there obstacles related to recreation that you ran into throughout your journey and, and how did you overcome those? Um, yeah, there, I mean, I feel like, you know, there's always obstacles as a person living with a disability. The world, you know, it doesn't really cater to us all the time and, and we have to get creative and find ways to adapt constantly. Um, and so, for example, gyms aren't really set up, um, you know, for a person with a disability. I wasn't able to do a lot of the machines there and just because I can't lift you know, even the smallest amount of weight. But um, so that's why we got creative and decided to create kind of our own space here that I was able to use um, more often and, and just, you know, it was much easier to get to. Um, and, you know, you don't have to put a pool in your house to work for you, but that, that was what was worked for me. Um, and I just, I just think that 
um, knowing there's going to be obstacles and not letting that hold you back from doing what you want to do. And don't be afraid to try something and and maybe it won't work out for you. Maybe it will. You know, a lot of times it, it, it can work. And um, a, a lot of the people, most of the people I know that live with muscular dystrophy, they're all, um, you know, masters at adapting to different situations and overcoming obstacles. Um, so just don't be afraid and, and don't be afraid to try new things. Thank you, uh, Amy, very much. Um, and speaking of, of new things, um, to, to shift gears just a little bit, but to think of current uh, current things, the pandemic uh, of late has really impacted so much, obviously. Um, Lori, what has the ACA seen as far as the pandemic's impact on people's interest in recreation opportunities? We've seen a huge increase in interest in recreational activities. We were seeing this increase before the pandemic and the pandemic really brought people outside. If you remember back to spring and summer, um, it really brought people into community parks, into state and national parks. Um, as, as you said in the beginning, Scott, the Outdoor Foundation or Outdoor um, Recreation Industry has noted exponential increases in interest in outdoor activity. That's all really exciting. We see that reflected in camp through high enrollment um, and now waiting lists. And so now the, the mandate is to increase access. We want everyone who wants an experience outdoors, uh, particularly at camp, to have one. Uh, so we're working with all kinds of partners, public and private, uh, to provide funds and remove barriers to to young people and uh, people of all ages to enjoy the outdoors through a high quality camp experience. That's great. And, and thinking of, of summer and, and activities outdoors, uh, Dr. Rosenbluth, with the extreme heat that uh, many locations uh, see during the summer, what precautions do you recommend people living with neuromuscular disease take when participating in outdoor activities? Sure, yeah, it, it's a hot one this summer. I think uh, sometimes you just have to say that it is too hot in the middle of the day. Uh, we actually have scheduled a lot of our programs earlier in the day or later to avoid kind of the middle of the day heat. Um, we use a lot more shade in our programs and I think people should seek shade, whether it's a, a structure or an umbrella. You know, sometimes with some of the equipment that we're using, we're spending a half an hour setting people up, you know, to, to be successful in the equipment. And that's a half an hour baking in the sun without the wind. Um, and so we really have to make sure we provide a good shade. Uh, I'm really a um, big believer in hydration. Um, so a lot of times you're super excited doing something that's super fun, not really thinking about drinking, but it's really important to, to kind of push that on yourself. Um, and, and more recently, we've done a lot with just evaporative cooling. So really just using, using water, whether it's a, a bandana or a, a kind of a neck gaiter, or even just a spray bottle where you're kind of spraying your skin and letting that evaporate has been really helpful in keeping people outside uh, playing longer and feeling more comfortable. Great, thank you so much for sharing those. Um, and to start to close out the conversation today, I'd like to hear from each of you if, if we could, um, what advice do you give to individuals about incorporating recreation into daily life? Dr. Rosenbluth, can we start with you? Yeah, I, I would say just, I really think you should make it a, a priority. If, if it doesn't look like it's, there's an opportunity, I, I would look a little harder. There's there's so many programs that are offering, you know, whether it's uh, in person, whether it's a specific program or a city program um, that has an adaptation, whether it's um, online, you know, some of the new virtual program that we've brought online since, uh, since COVID um, is not going away. It, it's staying because we're able to, impact people you know wherever they're at and whatever they're willing to do there is there is something out there to do and i think there's something out there that you will really enjoy and if those things don't exist yet let us know so that we can uh, create create them from scratch so thanks yeah absolutely thank you Lori. the same goes for camps uh you know we, we think about camps as, as sort of these isolated experiences that may be far at home or far from home or not accessible uh, the pandemic really taught camps how to how to become more accessible in a number of ways. One is by offering virtual programs. And a lot of camps have started to offer virtual programs as a way to allow uh, folks to kind of dip a toe into the water, give it a try, meet the staff, meet some of the other people who might be participating uh, before you make the commitment uh, to, a, to a day or an overnight camp experience. Um, I'll also say that a lot of camps are doing year-round programming, oftentimes in partnership with community organizations or with schools. 
So look for an opportunity to try a camp experience through uh, organizations that you're already involved with. Um, and often those are very short, either one day or sort of mini camp experiences, if that's brand new to you. Um, and then the big thing uh, that camps are, are really increasing right now are family camps. A great way to introduce young people to camps with their family, great way for families to recreate together. Um, so I would say, you know, if you, if you think a camp experience might be something that's too far away or inaccessible, um, know that camps are, are really diversifying how they offer camp experiences in a lot of ways uh, to dip a toe in the water, to try it out before you really fully commit. All right. Thank you, Lori. And, and Amy, what advice do you have for individuals about incorporating recreation into their daily life? So I would just say, you know, find something that you that you really love to do and, and that, that, you know, kind of sparks your passion. And and because I think, you know, exercise and movement are so important for those of us that are living with the neuromuscular disease. Um, and, and it doesn't just help ment or physically, it helps mentally as well. It kind of, you know, can give you confidence. Um, you feel a little bit stronger and and you know, try not to compare yourself to, to others that may be doing something that you think you can't do. Um, and, and like Dr. Rosenbluth said, said um, seek out those opportunities. If you think there's something that you can't do, but you'd love to do, chances are there might be something out there for you. And, and just, um, I just, my last thing I'd like to say is just keep trying, keep fighting, um, and just keep moving. Great. Thank you each so much. Um, and as Lori said, camp programs have, have found a new way uh, during the, the COVID pandemic. And, and as noted earlier, MDA values recreation a great deal. Um, and as many people are aware, the MDA summer camp program has been virtual for 2020 and 2021. Um, we've worked to ensure that virtual camp activities allow for campers to continue to enjoy recreation and the outdoors and have the opportunities to connect with others through the program. The program includes arts and crafts activities, as well as STEM projects, fun online games, and opportunities to connect through video and chat with other campers across the country. Uh, we intend to transition back to in-person camp programming next year, which we look forward to with, with a great deal of excitement, certainly. And to wrap up, thank you for attending today's Facebook Live event on adaptive recreation. If you were unable to join for the full conversation, the recording will be available for playback on Facebook, as well as on MDA's YouTube channel. And I'd like to thank again our Facebook Live supporter, Cool Ways Sports, for their generous support of today's program. And a special thanks to Dr. Rosenbluth, Lori, and Amy for joining us today. Thank you each. Thank you thank for you. having me. Thanks, Scott. And if, you, and if you'd like to learn more about the Trails program or the uh, American Camp Association, the links to those will be shared in the comments. And as you've heard, incorporating recreation into your life has many physical and mental benefits and we hope you've enjoyed this conversation. Thank you all for joining us today and please stay well.